All right, how are you guys in the collaborate? Hello, Professor. Good evening, Hello. Professor. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good evening, Professor. <laughs> good evening. Hello, good evening. Everyone. Hello, Thank Professor. Uh, good evening, Jimena. All right. So um, now this become this has become the norm. <laughs> I mean, this is supposed to be a uh, in-person class. I don't think the in-person class will not completely be, you know, uh, wiped out. It won't be obliterated, but more, more or less, it's going to be like a hybrid, but hybrid like this. Some people online, some people in person. I don't know. I mean, this is going to be the norm in the future, I guess, because um, there is uh, 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 plenty of, there are plenty of reasons for people um, uh, and especially non-traditional students in the sense of, you know, uh, students, you know, working full-time or part-time, right? And these days, jobs are plentiful. I mean, as I, I've been saying this over and over, um, the uh, job openings, right? The supply of jobs uh, far outweigh uh, the demand for jobs. Right, there are more job openings. So then, I mean, even without going to college, you know, people, you know, uh, people can get a, you know, decent paying jobs, but you still need college education to get, you know, promoted, to advance in your career. So then, you know, most people will be uh, attending college part time or online. You know, that, so I guess this is going to be a new trend. And also the uh, companies, big businesses. They are not necessarily recruiting, you know, uh, only uh, the college graduates. These days, they are looking for people with, you know, a higher capacity, regardless of the uh, their, you know, uh, academic credentials. So, if you're smart and you know highly cap uh, capable, then you can get a job with, you know, uh, um, a lot, you know. Uh, large corporations, you know, like, I'm not saying, you know, uh, JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs are the uh, only the, uh, the the best ones. They are not. Uh, but, you know, uh, you can start. Oh, uh, talking about uh, gold, uh, JP Morgan. Okay, I, I'm not even sharing screen. Uh, okay, uh, I posted something uh, today in the uh, Okay, let me go back to discussion. Yeah, in the announcement. Yeah, sure, right. Somebody noticed. Yeah. Oh, you good? Good. Yeah. Um. Uh, today, uh, May fourth. Okay. So, yeah. I see uh, how many people in there, uh, 14 people. Um, and then, yeah, let me just, uh, in the announcement, right? You got this, right, everyone? So uh, this is apprenticeship. I believe this is apprenticeship, not internship. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, if you pass this, if you pass this um, uh, program, then you will become an apprentice. Apprentice. Uh, so can I? I think I can draw on this. No. I was reading that they waste some courses. Mm -hmm. Oh. And um, at the 210 or 220, uh -huh. and you have to take it yet, or your, your um, internship, mm -hmm. they will waive it so you can do the work. So if you become an apprentice, if you become okay. part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe, you know, you have, um, there's also certain credit required. You have to have earned at least, you know, a certain 40 credits or something, right? Yeah. 
Oh, 43 credits. And uh, okay. Mm. So uh, yeah, uh, I guess something to uh, remember. All right. So we're um, uh, last. Remember, in our last class, we talked about the uh, uh, the tr decision tree analysis or tree diagram. You know, uh, basically, this is a very basic uh, decision tree uh, technique, and it's basically weighted average, right? We all understand what weighted average is. Uh, it's basically a technique, weighted average is oh something we already know weighted average cost of capital right we've already done weighted average cost of capital so we know what weighted average is and it's basically weight uh you weight it by probabilities and then the question is who who decides what these probabilities are of course i told you it's from monte carlo studies it's not like you know uh uh from the uh, probability uh, simulations, right? Monte Carlo simulations, you know, it generates probability. But, you know, uh, this is this was the simplest uh, model, uh, simplest example last time. Um, so we are doing, we're going into more complex model. Of course, the model can be as complex as it, uh, but, you know, if it is too complex, then it's hard to analyze. Um, uh, so we can think about, you know, uh, uh, probabilities like that. At first, there is, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, year one, prob you have two probability, uh, two branches that emanate from um, the initial node. This is called node. Uh, node. Node, I believe. It's called node. Um, it branches out from the initial node. Uh, and then uh, we get to a, uh, uh, and the, from the, in the second node, right? Then, you know, uh, 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 other probabilities, right? Which will lead to different uh, cash flows, right? So just like that, uh, uh, next example will be uh, something uh, uh, that would replicate that kind of, you know, uh, uh, decision tree model. So let's... Uh, Let's go into this example, Wingfoot Shoe Factory of uh, example 12.2 has refined this market study and has some additional info about potential customer acceptance of the new product. There are two possibilities along the upper branch. In other words, upper branch is what? Uh, there is a 60% probability is the demand will be good, right? That's the upper branch. And then it's not just going to be good, but, you know, there are possibilities that it could be excellent or it could be just good, right? So that means, you know, uh, the upper, even the upper branch will uh, uh, break out into two branches. So consumer responses can be good or excellent. If demand is good during the first year, there exists a 30% chance that will grow to excellent in the second and third years. Okay, this symbol that looks like E flipped, right? That means there exists. Okay, there exists. Um, uh, so if there's a 30% chance it will grow excellent, Right? That means there's a, the other, the other probabilities 
is 70%. So 70% chance, there exists a 70% chance demand in year uh, two and three. One change, meaning, you know, just good, not, not excellent. Okay, so if you remember, previously it was like this. There is 60% probability that it's going to be good, right? But then now, this will not just be like this. Uh, there is 30% probability it will be excellent and 70% probability just good, right? In year two and three. Yeah. Okay. So the upper branch is now breaking into uh, two, uh, uh, excellent and good. So, uh, in cons so if consumer response turns out excellent, additional investment of one million can be made in expansion. So think about it. Uh, If consumer response is excellent, we may need more, we will need, maybe we may need more machine, right? If the demand is excellent, uh, and if you're already running at full capacity, we won't have any more production capacity, right? If you're already running at full capacity, but the demand is excellent. We will need to add more production capacity. That will require 1 million. Okay, in year two, right? And then if, if we do that, then we can sell enough to generate cash flow of 5 million, right? Rather than 3 million. So in the original example, you had only two, two branches, right? Two branches, either, you know, or two probabilities, just good or bad, but this example in the upper branch, uh, upper branch breaks into two, excellent and good. But ex so if it is good, it will just generate 3 million. Cash flow generated will be 3 million. But if it is excellent, it will generate 5 million. But for the you know, cash flow to be 5 million, additional $1 million investment need to be made in year two, at the beginning of year two, right? Why? Because it's capacity expansion, right? If the company has been running at full capacity, you cannot meet the excellent demand because uh, to meet excellent demand, you have to produce more. So uh, think about it. In year two and year three, Cash, uh, cash inflow will be 5 million, but you have to make 1 million investment in year two. So in year two, net cash flow, net cash flow will be 4 million, right? Because of that, but 5 million in year three. So I'll put it into a decision, uh, that tree diagram. Now this will make, uh, this will make more. So initial five, five million, right? That's of course, you know, initial investment is needed. And then year one, um, uh, there is 60% probability that it's going to be good. Okay. But in, um, uh, so you'll have 3 million in your, 3 million in year, year one, but then from year two, it can be either excellent, uh, excellent or just good. This is excellent or just good, right? If it is just good, it will still generate 3 million, 3 million. 
But in if it is excellent, it's gonna be it's gonna generate five million. Five million, five million. But at the beginning of year two, you had to make investment of one million. Right? Makes sense. So the net cash flow, net cash flow in year two will be four million. That's why it's gonna be four million. Right? Now, of course, if it is not good, right, there is 40% probability it will be just, you know, uh, uh, not so good. And then, you know, uh, it will be just 1.5 million. And of course, then all we need to do is weight these cash flows by the probabilities. Right? Makes sense? Weight these cash flows by probabilities. So here... Uh, oh, uh, it's better to uh, uh, look at it this way. Um, uh, since we have already uh, in the Excel file, right? Uh, why do I have two of them? Oops, not that. Okay, so. Updates. As soon as it's available, but it doesn't let me. Take a look at this uh, 12.3 uh, and please open this file. So I have now I have uh, two branches, right? Two branches in the uh, uh, upper branch. Um, probability of excellent, probability of good. Now, of course, in the first year, the probabilities are 60%. In the second year, 30% to be excellent, 70% uh, just to be good. So all we need to do is we'll just you know, find, as we did in the previous example. So let's find the uh, present value, okay? Which is not a difficult thing. Plus 10%, and hit F4 to lock into, uh, and then raise it to time. And then we drag it down. Okay. Of course, these things. Uh, The positive cash flows must be in uh, uh, black, right? Not not in red. Uh, now the second one, uh, if uh, we all know the drill. Uh, Oh, before we do the second one, let's do the, uh, uh, let's find the NPV here. Net present value will be like this. And the probability weighted net present value will be. Now the probability we have, uh, we have what they call conditional probability or joint probability. Joint probability and conditional probability are basically the same thing because uh, joint probability is um, when probability uh, these things happen simultaneously, conditional probability is basically happening in sequence. For, for example, let's think about this. Uh, what is the probability? Uh, let's say we have... Uh, in, in generally in regular BMCC class, there are 30 students in the classroom <laughs> before the pandemic in, you know, uh, in-person class, 30 students. So let's say 30 students, uh, out of those 30 students, uh, 20 are female and let's say 10 are male, okay? 
And then only 10, uh, 20%, 20% of this class got A, let's say, A, right? So then 20% of this class would be six people, right? Isn't that right? So then the question is, what is the probability of a female student, right, to get an A? Now think about it. It has to meet, uh, satisfy two conditions at the same time, right? What are those conditions? The probability of being in this 20%, and then the probability of being uh, 20 out of 30, so 2 over 3, right? If you're a female, you'll be two out of, the probability of a female is two out of three. And if you are, if you got A, the probability uh, was 20%, uh, 0.2, right? And if you're a female and got A, these two probabilities must happen jointly, right? So these probabilities must occur jointly. That's joint probability. So what do you do then? Uh, three over two times, uh, point 0.2, right? Point 0.2 times 3 over 2 times 30, right? Uh, I mean, the probability alone, probability alone would be point 0.2 times 2 over 3, right? That's joint probability. But let's, uh, but then also think about it. Uh, the case of conditional probability, let's say uh, you must, uh, let's say there are 30 bowls in the, uh, 30 bowls in the, uh, in a sack, right? Uh, and there are, <clears throat> out of those 30 bowls, um, You're, you're drawing, um, uh, oh, oh, there are, uh, so there are two sacks, two sacks, and in these two sacks, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> the billiard balls, right? The, the billiard balls are in the two sacks. But in the first sack, there are, <coughs> uh, there are 30 balls. And the numbers, so there are numbers there would be one through 30. And uh, if you pick any number between one and 10, let's say uh, you win and you can go to the next step, right? So numbers numbers on the board are one, uh, one to 30. And then you have to pick the numbers between one and 10. What's the probability of picking one uh, any number, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, within that range. Of course, that probability will be one over three, because there are thirty balls, and you have to pick uh, one of those ten balls. And then, if you got, if you got that, then you can go to the next round. And the next round, uh, there's another um, sack of these balls, and there are uh, twenty red balls, twenty red balls, and with numbers between, let's say, numbers between thirty-one and fifty. And so uh, uh, 31 through 50, that's 20, 20 balls, right? And if you pick uh, 31, between 31 and 35, you win. So what's the probability of uh, picking uh, 31 through 35? Well, of course, that would be five, um, uh, 1 over 4 because it's 5 over 20, right? Now, think about it. In this case, it's just like the joint probability, but you have to first, you know, pick numbers between one and ten first. Then you can proceed to the next round, right? So, and then if you proceed to the next round, then uh, uh, you have, so the first the probability in the first round is one over three, right? And the probability in the second round is one over four. But you know, uh, so let's say if you pass both uh, rounds, then you win, let's say $1 million, okay? But to, for that to happen, these probabilities must, you have to, uh, 
satisfy both probabilities, just like in the joint probability case, but there is a sequence here, right? First, you have to meet, you have to satisfy the first round first, and then only after that, right? On condition that you have passed the first round, then you can go to the second round. So it's, the condi it's called conditional probability, right? So the probability to, one, to win $1 million in this example will be like uh, one third times one fourth, right? Which will be what? One over, uh, one over 12, only that, that's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong here, but you know, uh, but the idea, I think. So think about it. Compared with the joint probability example, um, you know, um, what is the probability of a female student, you know, getting A, you know? Uh, in that first example, these two probabilities must happen jointly at the same time, right? That's joint probability. But in the second example, it's just like joint probability, but it happens one after another. Without replacement. Hmm? Without replacement. Oh, without replacement. And and yeah, because it's you know there's no uh, uh, there's no uh, you mean you know uh, without replacement because it's it's not the same ball of uh, sack of balls. It's you know, first five balls, thirty, you pick, and then that's stuff. That's it. You don't have to put your hand in that sack again. Uh, the, if you pass it, you go to the next round. Right? If you don't pass it, well, that's it. Over. Right? So in other words, in conditional probability, it happens, you know, uh, if, uh, uh, if one thing happens, then the next thing can happen. Otherwise, it won't happen. Right? So I think in conditional probability, if you have to beat um, Uh, you have to beat the other, you know, um, as well. But uh, but anyway, uh, I guess you know my my uh, example is not uh, exactly uh, how it should be. But you know, you get the idea. Joint probability, conditional probability, they are basically the same thing, right? But um, so uh, the point is, this is exactly conditional probability, isn't it? Right. First, this must happen. First, this 60% must happen, isn't it right? And then this 30% must happen. So this is, you know, a, a joint probability, exactly. So there you go. That's the uh, probability weighted net present value. In the second case, now this should come uh, uh, fill out later. The second one, it's the same thing. Uh, we discount it by one plus discount rate raised to the uh, year's digit. You drag it down. Oh, I forgot to uh, lock. You got to lock the, uh, and then you drag it down. Net present value, uh, auto sum. And then so probability weighted net present value in this case will be, of course, then this times this times this. OK? But these are only you know, upper branch. So far, we've done up, upper branch. What about lower branch, right? Uh, the poor case, right? If the uh, demand turns poor, we'll have only 1.5 million. We'll have only 1.5 million every year. Uh, okay, this this shouldn't be a neg. Oh uh, no, 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 this shouldn't be negative. Uh, I mean, this shouldn't be in red font. And then this one, of course, uh, we discount it by one plus k, and then uh, lock. Okay, and then raise to zero, and then we drag it down. Of course, um, if it is positive, don't make it red. And then 
we know what to do, um, AutoSum, and then weighted by this probability. I mean, this once, you know, in year one, if it is already bad, then year two and three, no other probability, it's just that. So now, what do you see here? Uh, so finally, the weighted average net present value, right? It's the sum of these, sum of, each, you know, uh, sum of the probability weighted net present values in each case, right? So that's the, uh, uh, that's the uh, weighted uh, average net present value in this scenario. Now, so the tree diagram or uh, tree analysis, it's a, a good way of, uh, it's a good way of uh, arriving at the expected net present value, right? Uh, of course, that, the basically tree diagram is basically, you know, uh, uh, very analytical because, you know, uh, uh, good case, bad case, and then probability associated with them. And then if it is, if the good case, you know, uh, branches into uh, excellent and just good, right? Uh, that's another level of analysis, right? Also, bad case can turn into just bad or horrible, right? There can be also probabilities. I mean, think about it. The scenario analysis that we use for um, portfolios uh, also would fall into that type of, you know, uh, uh, different states of the economy. Economic boom, just a good uh, regular economy or good economy, normal, normal economy, and then uh, mild recession, severe recession, right? There can be four states. And then there are probabilities associated with those. So uh, we have, so far, there isn't anything about real option yet. Of course, you know, <laughs> now, uh, these are the probabilities. Actually, excellent, if it is excellent, the probabilities, uh, the excellent case, the joint probability is 18%, right? We all know because it's three times, uh, six times three, 60%, 60% probability first, and then 30% probability next, right? So 18%. And then uh, most likely case looks like, you know, uh, uh, 42%, right? Uh, uh, just good, good in the first year, good in the second year, good in the third year. And then even, this is uh, surprising, um, uh, loss, bad, you know, uh, right? Did we have negative? It has, you know, basically a, a poor, a poor demand, and so a poor result. Forty percent probabilities, right? Uh, it didn't look like that serious. Didn't look that serious, but you know, it is actually, right? So why is the net present value not like, uh, I think these numbers are off because that was the case of the first example in the, in this current example, um, the excellent, in the excellent case, the net present value was, uh, I mean, numbers were, yeah, 862. Excellent. Uh, oh, before before probability weight, but you know probability is already weighted. 
four, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, uh, oh, that was before waiting by probabilities, before waiting, right? Before waiting by probabilities. Okay, now, the same, the same example uh, is getting more, uh, getting more, um, ex getting more exciting, or <laughs> what should I say? It's getting more, it's getting spiced up. I mean, so far it was very bland, but it's getting spiced up. Uh, with the uh, real option. What's an option? An option is the right or ability to take a certain course of action. A real option is a course of action that usually improves financial results under certain conditions. Uh, but, you know, what is a real option? I mean, what? There are two types of options, usually, you know, um, real option and financial options. Real means as opposed to financial. Real options, uh, real options mean some options that we can uh, apply, or so, some options that we can exercise on the uh, real or physical assets. Physical assets mean plant, plant and equipment, right? Whereas financial, uh, financial option, financial options are basically coal and put. Call and put it on the stock. Call is an option to buy the stock at a pre-specified price. Put is an option to sell the stock at a pre-specified price. So it's usually, option is usually the term used in the uh, uh, financial assets. So call option is something like this. Let, let's say you are, uh, yeah. Question? Okay, call option is something like, you know, uh, let's say um, you want to, uh, you are waiting, uh, you are watching, uh, you're watching Tesla, you know, watching for the uh, right opportunity to buy Tesla. You think Tesla is uh, overpriced now. I mean, Tesla is currently about 900, below even $900. Today, maybe it has, but even a couple of weeks ago, Tesla was, you know, uh, somewhere uh, around 1,100, uh, 1,200. 1, uh, uh, so let's say, but that is very, you think Tesla is overpriced, overvalued. So you think, uh, you, you're afraid if you buy Tesla for 1,200, then uh, it will fall. You don't want to, right? Buy buy Tesla and you know you pay one thousand two hundred for Tesla and you don't want it to fall right away. So you're waiting uh, for the right timing, right? To buy Tesla. And if Tesla is overpriced, it will fall to something like nine hundred dollars or you know eight hundred dollars, and you think you know you will buy it then, right? But then who knows? Who knows where Tesla is gonna go? I mean, is it gonna? Is it going to make that turnaround soon? Currently, let's say Tesla is 1,200, and it's going to make a turn next week. Is it going to make a turnaround next week? I mean, uh, will it fall slightly next week? I mean, if it falls to $800, you will buy. But, you know, it may not fall at all. It may just keep going. Accelerate. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It fell already, but you know, I'm, uh, it's it, we're just you know uh, doing a thought experiment, right? We're just doing a thought experiment. Um, uh, what if it just keeps going? You know, I mean, currently one thousand two hundred, and then next week it's one thousand, you know, uh, three hundred or four hundred. Then uh, the week after the next, you know, uh, it might just keep going, and then you will think about it you will regret, right? You will regret not having taken any action, not having bought it when it was 1,200. If it keeps going like 1, to 1,400, 1,500, you will definitely regret, right? And uh, you cannot sleep 
Well, you will kick your blanket, right? In your sleep, you will kick your blanket, right? Out of, you know, uh, in a fit of anger and you know, regret, you will kick your uh, blanket um, or duvet or whatever. You will <laughs> kick in your bed, right? Don't you think? <laughs> so uh, that's why, that's, that's where the call option comes in. Now, call option is an option to buy Tesla at a pre-specified price, so if the price goes up, right? So let's say uh, uh, you buy, of course, call option is not for free, right? Call option is not for free. Uh, let's say call option is $100, OK? Uh, it will be actually cheaper than that, much, much cheaper than that, but uh, just to make the thought experiment easier. Um, so let me use, um, uh, and then if you, so if you pay $100, by paying $100, uh, it gives you the right to buy Tesla at $1,200 if the price goes above $1,200. Make sense? But actually, that means you are paying 1,300, right? Because with the call option price. But so you're in the money, you will be in the money, right? Or the call option is in the money if the price goes above 1,300. Does that make sense? The more the price goes up, the more you're in the money, right? That's a call option. Um, and the put option, so um, uh, put option is the opposite. I mean, if you're if you are selling, right? You want to sell. I mean, if you're a seller, if you're trying to sell Tesla, uh, if you then the higher the price, the better it is. But the price uh, you are waiting for that right timing, but you don't know when it's going to happen. And if you hold out the more, uh, what if tomorrow? price falls, next week price falls. And by not having sold it today, you will regret, right? As I said, you will kick your duvet in, in your bed, you know, at night in a fit of anger and regret, right? Um, so by uh, buying put option, that gives you the right to sell at a pre-specified, even the price falls. Right, it, uh, it gives you the right to sell still at 1,200, even the even if the price falls to 800. So, actually, then think about it. Um, the price should uh, you're selling it at 1,200, right? But since you paid 1,100 dollars for the call price, actually, um, uh, it's Actually, you're, it's like selling it at 1,100, right? So the, co the put option will be in the money if the price falls below 1,100. Make sense? The more it falls, the more in the money you are, right? That's the put option. Um, that's in the, uh, the set, that's the uh, uh, very typical options in the uh, financial option, financial options. But in real real options, as I said, real means you know, it's just like a uh, it's an option that means you know it's a right to uh, do something. An option is basically a right, but not an obligation, isn't it right? If you are the seller of option, you have obligation. I mean, if I buy if I buy call option, there's a call seller of the call option, right? And if the price goes up, the buyer of the call option is in the money, but the seller of the uh, call option will be out of money. Makes sense? The, the seller will lose. But you know, the reason the seller sells the call option is because the seller bets that the price will fall. Right? The buyer bets the price will go up. Seller bets the price will go down. If uh, the price goes down, of course, you know, uh, uh, most of the times, the sellers win, I think. 
Uh, but if you are a buyer of the call option, you don't have any obligation to perform. You just have the right to exercise, right? So it's the same thing. Real option, if you have the real option, it uh, there will be some cost, right? Because options are not for free. There will be some cost, but you have this uh, right to exercise that option if the conditions are right. And then that will cost you, uh, that will save you a lot of loss. That will spare you from a lot of loss, right? So let's, um, uh, yeah. What about uh, employee options? Like, uh, no, no, that, that means, you know, uh, uh, just, you know, uh, incentive for the uh, employees. You mean employee stock option, right? Yeah. That, is, that just means employees have uh, option to uh, 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 buy uh, the company stock at cheaper price, right? They offer it at, you know, probably at a cheaper price. I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, it will be cheaper than, you know, uh, uh, when they are buying from the market, right? It would be at least, you know, some, you know, small percentage cheaper. And employee stock option is, you know, um, uh, something like, you know, uh, when you are a, uh, uh, some something like a uh, uh, management, right? CFO, CEO, uh, COO, or CIO, you know, CEO, these top managers, when they are hired, they are offered stock options, right? That, that's obvious. You know, that means, you know, uh, oh, we'll give you, you know, uh, uh, 10,000 shares of this. It's a way of, you know, uh, ma uh, giving managers incentive to work harder, right? To uh, uh, so. Option in the sense is not the same thing here. Uh, this is this option um, is what the uh, company can take, and uh, real options are the options that the company can take. Financial options are what the investors can take. The employee option or the uh, employee stock option is you know they are offering employees stock option. You know management. I don't know if I should consider management employees, but you know. Uh, uh, if they are given these options, then either they can sell it and cash it, right? At the, uh, when the time is right, right? When they think, you know, this is the right time to sell, they can sell this. Inst think about it. On uh, managements will get this on top of the uh, benefits and friend, you know, benefits and you know, uh, perks because the management will have get a lot of perks and you know, fringe benefits, right? Employees will get some benefits too, right? And if um, if employees are offered uh, stock options, you know, it's um, normally employees generally um, uh, it it's a way of actually uh, it's a way of generating more equity for the company, right? by you know, uh, offering uh, stocks to the employees. And that way, employees will have more incentives to work harder because if, they're, uh, if they work hard, harder, and if the company uh, results in a bigger profit, uh, their stock holding will appreciate in value. Everybody will, you know, there's an incentive for, for the, uh, and then also, the company will have uh, a solid funding source for you know their equity, right? And think about it: employee stock option will generally come out of where? And how do the how will the employees buy those stocks? Yeah, small portion of their paycheck goes. So in other words. It will be a great way for the company to save on expenses and, you know, also uh, uh, strengthen their equity position. 
Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I wanted to mention. <laughs> it's so win win for, I mean, now at least on the same. And then, of course, <laughs> if, um, if everything works out uh, as ideally, <laughs> As you know, a plan, but you know, sometimes you know, uh, uh, think about it. Who is the majority shareholder of the company? And you gotta think about it. If the majority shareholder is a uh, uh, some corporate raider, right? If the majority shareholder is a some corporate raider, uh, a hedge funds and some corporate raider, they will be ruthlessly. Right, uh, uh, breaking up. Uh, I mean, they will take all this money. You know, uh, they will sell their shares when the shares are the stock price is the highest. They will, in, you know, in, intentionally, right, uh, take profit that way. And then once they sell huge, you know, uh, 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 huge amount of shares, then obviously the price will fall after you know, after the sell off, right. And these, you know, uh, uh, corporate raiders and hedge funds, they take huge profit and leave the, uh, the company behind. And uh, the employees who were holding the stocks of this company will be left with nothing, right? When the stock uh, plummets, right? So uh, you have to watch carefully. I mean, when they offer uh, employee uh, ownership, they call it, you know, uh, they call it employee ownership. Yeah, because if the employees buy stocks of their own company, employees are becoming owners. I mean, theoretically, in, in theory, becoming owners. But, you know, I can say, I'm a, I'm a uh, Tesla owner. I'm really a Tesla owner. But does that mean I'm Elon Musk? No. I have, I have actually uh, 10 shares of Tesla. That's all. How many shares are there outstanding? Huh? Probably uh, uh, 10 million shares. So. Uh, if I have 10 shares, that's like 10 over 10 million. So uh, my ownership is 1 over 1 million. Of course, everyone is, you know, uh, average Joe and average Jane are part owner, partial owners, right? Minority shareholders. I'm a very minority shareholder. So still, you can, if you consider that owner, right? You can say I'm, I'm a proud owner of Tesla. I don't even ha own a Tesla car, right? <laughs> Just, you know. Um, but again, so uh, you gotta see how the, uh, the you gotta look, watch the ownership control. Who has the majority share? You know, who is the majority shareholder? And if the majority shareholder is some uh, fishy um, hedge fund, right? Hedge, there will be you know, a lot of hedge funds you know, or uh, institutional investors that hold you know, like 15%, you know, one institutional investor holding 15%, another institutional investor holding you know, uh, 18%, another institutional investor holding 11%, hedge funds you know, holding 9%. You know. And some of those hedge funds could be corporate raiders. And if the corporate raiders are, you know, are, uh, forming a, uh, if corporate raiders form a, um, uh, uh, what do you call that, a pact or collusion of, and then they try to uh, uh, just you know, pump up the price and you know, dump, right? Just pump up and dump. They will sell off and they will dump this company, right? They will sell off and take profit when the price is the highest. Because they pumped it up deliberately, they artificially pumped it up, and they sell off, right? They take profit, and the uh, the employee owners will be <laughs> cliffhangers, right? They will become cliffhangers, right? So you gotta watch who's the owner, majority shareholder, right? You gotta watch who's the. Uh, anyway, uh, the option here means, you know. Uh, uh, the right to right you can exercise, right? So, and as I said, real option is an option on the uh, physical plant and equipment, right? That's why it's called real option. It's a course of action that usually improves financial results under certain conditions. It exists in a real physical business sense. 
and frequently occurs in capital budgeting. This, yeah, this is something that can be incorporated in the into capital budget. Generally increases the generally increases increases the project's expected net present value. Um, so there, uh, how many types of options, real options are there? There are abandon abandonment option, an expansion option, investment timing option, and flexibility options. So uh, uh, let's take a look at the expansion option. You know, um, remember in our uh, shoe factory, uh, wind shoe factory, was it? Shoe factory example, they had an option of uh, expanding in year two, remember, by investing another $1 million, right? That's an expansion option. Often requires little or no early commitment, uh, but there will be uh, at, at the beginning, uh, but th there will be a time, you know, it will come along uh, later on. It should be planned whenever possible, whenever possible. So. Uh, in the second year, there's a probability that the demand will turn excellent, right? So then you can, you know, uh, uh, plan on it. And then uh, investment timing option, it permits delaying investment until more until you become more certain about surrounding issues. Uh, option contract on land. Uh, and then abandonment, uh, okay, uh, before abandonment, a flexibility option. Uh, it's, an option uh, it's an option that can preserve the ability to respond to changing business conditions. So, for example, keeping more than one supplier despite extra cost. Now, think about it. Usually, big manufacturers, uh, they will have a vendor or supplier of uh, the parts and components, right? Usually, the vendor and vendor or supplier wants to have a uh, like a, a sole distributor agreement, right? Obviously, if I'm think about it, if I'm um, uh, Dell. Dell is a uh, computer, a big computer manufacturer, and there will be there will be multiple uh, manufacturers, small manufacturers of parts and components, right? Like you know, mouse, keyboard, and you know, small, uh, of course, uh, chips, microchips uh, like Intel. They are not small. Uh, they are uh, they are uh, as giant as you know, like Dell, uh, but you know. Uh, small parts and components, like you know, um, small things, dongle or you know, um, connecting, you know, uh, dongle. Or, these things are made by small manufacturers. And there are more of them than the computer manufacturer, right? And these small uh, suppliers want to secure a steady, steady. Uh, a steady contract with steady demand by the uh, uh, by the big manufacturer, right? So usually, you know, okay, if you give us a sole distributor chip or sole distributor agreement, you sign this for the next five years, you will buy this only from us, and we will give you five percent discount or ten percent discount. We'll give you, you know, we'll supply at a cheaper price than our competitors. So that's the benefit of you no know, sole distributorship or sole supplier agreement, right? But uh, so if you don't do that, then you can you have the flexibility. You can buy from different suppliers, but it will be more costly because you don't get the 10% discount. Make sense? But then it gives you the uh, flexibility Although it's costlier, right? Keeping more than one supplier will give you the flexibility to respond to changing business conditions, right? So that's flexibility option. 
abandonment option is basically uh, 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 the ability to abandon um, the project, but you know, this will, by abandoning project, it's not gonna uh, deepen our loss, but it's it actually lowers the risk. So abandonment option, it can increase net present value and lower risk. Uh, however, the contractual obligations can make abandonment tough. So uh, early planning is imperative. Okay. Now this will take a lot of time to go over um, uh, next example. Next example is really the uh, uh, this real option example. So I think this will have to be this uh, Monday, right? We have we don't have time to go over this. So any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? All right, the guys on the uh, the guys in the collaborate. Do you have any questions? There are tw uh, eleven people in the. Uh, do you have any uh, questions? No. No. Do you have any? no. All righty. So, um, uh, okay. Then you know I will see you guys on Monday. Have a have a great evening, and uh, 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 I will sign out. Okay. Uh, so I'll uh, first stop recording.